So over the past couple years, and especially over the older Pandemi Lovato, lots of celebrities have been sharing their book recommendations. Some good, some bad, some on a yacht. And when I did a video on Kendall Jenner's reading recommendations, she then did an interview with ID Magazine where she told me to mind my own business. And I did not listen. I have ignored that advice. And instead, I've been slowly but surely working my way through celebrity book recs, all as part of my celebrity book club here on this channel. See exhibit A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, someone incredible out there, they heard my prayers and they created a whole Instagram account just dedicated to celebrity book recommendations. Their username is at Celeb Book Rec, so full credit to them, they are amazing because they have also been curating lists of celebrity book recommendations. And so I thought today I would just absolutely guarantee that I can never get a job <laughs> in show business. I'm getting myself blacklisted from every party, every function, every event ever by sitting on the internet and judging the taste of famous people based solely on their book recommendations. You recommend a book, I will be psychoanalyzing you. And so this video series is actually going to become an epic trilogy, where firstly we're going to look at actresses, then actors, and then finally musicians. And just to spice things up a little bit, at the end of each video I'm going to pick three, yeah, three book recommendations from the celebrities that I haven't yet read and buy them. The ones that I think sound the best. So let's make like Tom Daly and dive in. Okay, so firstly we have Florence Pugh. Now, Florence Pugh is actually my best friend. She just doesn't know it yet. I dream of being as unbothered as Florence Pugh was when everyone at Venice Film Festival was talking about her and she was just swanning about in a cool outfit with an Aperol spritz. Not a flying fuck in sight and I respect it. Icons only and you know when Florence Pugh does the face, you know the face, shit is about to hit the fan. So, you know what? There may be reason to whip out the face because I'm seeing Dune. I am seeing my sworn enemy, I hate this book, with every fiber of my being. I hate it with every grain of sand on that stupid planet. It's very long and it's very boring. I know people love this book, but to me, I just thought the characters were so one dimensional. The reliance on archaic gender roles aged like milk on the Dune desert. I felt like this book is just all world building and no substance. And I'm sorry about it. However, Florence Pugh is actually going to be in the second Dune movie. So I think, you know, we can let her off. Just to my core, I am a hater of this book, and even for my bestie, I, I can't let it slide. The girls, on the other hand, that's a book wreck. I do think this is good. It's about a girl who is drawn into a cult, and actually, if you look at kind of the movies that Florence Pugh has been in, I think she might have a bit of an interest in cults, which is fun because I feel like if she started one, we would probably all join quite readily. So this is what she says, I really loved the way bodies are described and the difference that one summer can make when going through puberty. I mean, that is true. I was a completely different person every year of my teens. To me, this book would put the mid in midsummer. I think it's good, but it's not exceptional, you know? I do love cult books though. If I was to recommend one to you, I would say Bunny by Mona Armour. That is so great. I think the girls walk so Bunny could run. And then finally, we have The Secret Garden. She says, The Secret Garden changed me. That was so magical. I've never read this book, but you know what? Maybe this is a sign that it's time. She said, don't worry, darling, but actually I, I'm a little worried. I'm a little concerned. These are not my favorite, but I'm... Um, I'm gonna let it slide because it's Florence Pugh. Moving on to someone completely unrelated. The next person is Olivia Wilde. So, there's that. Are her books as good as her salad dressing? We'll see. Educated is a fascinating book. She said she sat down on her plane seat, didn't feel takeoff, six hours of flying or landing, unreal. Thank you, Tara Westover. That is a great review. This is a book about a girl who grows up in a Mormon family who are basically like doomsday preppers. They spend their whole life preparing for the end of the world. They make sure that they're completely self-sufficient and kind of separated from society. And as a result, they don't send their kids to school. And so Tara Westover didn't have a formal education until she was 17, I think. And it is a captivating story. I just felt like the book needed better editing or a more accurate title because really this is about her very specific upbringing. And there's a huge gap in the book where she goes from being completely uneducated to getting into like the top universities in the world. And I was like, how did that bit happen? And she doesn't elaborate or explain that bit at all, which I thought was a real gap in this book. And I thought that would have been really intriguing. Anyway, next we have The Power. She just says, believe the hype. 
so I guess I will. In the power, the world is a recognizable place. There's a rich Nigerian kid who lounges around the family pool, a foster girl whose religious parents hide their true nature, a local American politician, a tough London girl from a tricky family, but something vital has changed causing their lives to converge with devastating effects. Teenage girls now have immense physical power. They can cause agonizing pain and even death. And with this small twist of nature, the world changes utterly. The next book, How to Change Your Mind, seems to be about psychedelics, which, you know, I'm not necessarily surprised that she would be interested in. I mean, listen to any lyric on a Harry Styles album and you won't be surprised that the people around him might be interested in this kind of thing. This book is all about using hallucinogenics to treat depression and other disorders. It's an interesting discussion on how we view mental health and hallucinogenic drugs and the kind of ancient connection between these two things. So there you go. Then we have The Circle. I have to say, I have never heard anyone say a good word about this book. Ever. But Olivia Wilde says this was so intensely enjoyable. Then we also have Between the World and Me. The world will be a more evolved place once we all read this book. Take my word for it and absolutely go pick it up today. Absolutely brilliant. What is it like to inhabit a black body and find a way to live within it? And how can America reckon with its fraught racist history? Okay, that sounds incredibly interesting. We also have two extra recommendations. One is about religious extremism. It's called Unfollow. And the other one is The Girls, again. Again, given the themes of Don't Worry Darling, it makes sense that a lot of the books she's interested in have a kind of dystopian, cultish theme. They're all about extreme systems that are, if you will, a little wild. Lily Collins. I can feel it coming in the year tonight. The Nepo babies have arrived. And one thing about babies of nepotism, they are going to recommend books. What does Emily in Paris recommend? Having both To Kill a Mockingbird and Pride and Prejudice is giving literature exam. Not gonna lie. Both are great, but it's giving, I wrote an essay on these at school, so I guess they're my favorite book. And also, anyone who says Pride and Prejudice is their favorite Jane Austen book, I'm like, please read Emma. You will love it. I really think that's her magnum opus. About Pride and Prejudice, she says, it never gets old. Reading it reminds me of growing up in the countryside and Jane Austen's dialogue is smart and witty. So true. Jane Austen's humor has really stood the test of time, which I think is so special. Next, we have the perks of being a wallflower because we were all an angsty teenager once. Is that just a universal experience that you go through a phase <laughs> where you're like coming of age and you encounter this book or the movie and you're like, that is everything I needed and more. She says, we accept the love we think we deserve is a simple concept, but so poignantly expressed. To be happy in a relationship, we must have a positive one with ourselves. So true. I feel like this quote just really sticks with you. It's very Tumblr coded at this point, but I just feel like it really expresses that sentiment perfectly. And I still think about it regularly. She recommended an apple a day, doctors must hate her. She also recommended Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Three women at different crossroads, but they all wind up in the same shocking place. And Lily Collins said, the drama kept unfolding until the last page. Smart and honest, I found myself involved in all of the women's lives and read it in two days flat. Uh, now I'm getting book FOMO because I haven't read this one. I kind of want to read this one now, damn it. And I love that she binge read this book. She's just like me for real, except rich. Speaking of Nepo babies, next we have Phoebe Dynava. I think that's how you say it. I'm seeing a little life. I see a little life. Also, we're depressed, depressed. I see how it is. I love this book. And whenever I see anyone else love this book, I'm like, oh, so we're all fucked up. Great. Bibi says, I read A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara in lockdown and was completely hooked. You and me both, girl. You and me both. We're all in this together and we all need a hug, honestly. I have not known happiness since reading this enormous, sad thing. Then we have a Patti Smith recommendation. I feel like if we take a shot for every Patti Smith recommendation we see in this video, we are gonna be hammered because celebrities love Patti Smith. And Patti Smith is like the queen of the name drop. So this is M Train and the description is an unforgettable odyssey of a legendary artist told through her prism of the cafes and haunts she has worked in around the world. It is a book Patti Smith has described as a roadmap to her life, braiding despair and hope and consolation. Illustrated with her signature Polaroids, M Train is a meditation on travel, detective shows, literature, and coffee. It is a powerful, deeply moving book by one of the most remarkable multi platform artists at work today. Oh, I need it. Okay, Phoebe. I'm listening. Then we have The Road. A father and his son walk alone through burned America. Nothing moves in the ravaged landscape save the ash on the wind. It is cold enough to crack stones, and when the snow falls, it is gray. The sky is dark. Their destination is the coast, 
although they don't know what, if anything, awaits them there. They have nothing, just a pistol to defend themselves against the lawless bands that stalk the road. The clothes they're wearing are carts of scavenged food and each other. Wait, I need these books. Letting go. She says, it completely changed how I view the world and how I view myself. It now sits by my bed all highlighted and I pick it up whenever I need a little booster. Maybe it might do for you what it did for me. Now I can get behind someone who like scribbles and highlights in their books. Phoebe, I think we might be soulmates. Are you, do you feel what I feel? And then we have Figuring, which explores the complexities of love and the human search for truth and meaning through the interconnected lives of several historical figures across four centuries, with an astronomer, a marine biologist, and an author who catalyzed the environmental movement. That sounds great. Now, before we move on to the next celebrity, you may have noticed my phone case. Not just in this video, but pretty much every video I've made and my TikToks and my Instagram because I love it. And I get so many compliments on it. It's actually from Casetify, who I'm very excited to let you know, have actually sponsored today's video. Now, Casetify is the world's leading tech accessory brand. And they're known and trusted for their protective phone cases, as well as their really, really cool global collaborations. They work with so many independent artists, I think about 300. And so buying their products also supports local artists, which is really cool. They give them completely free reign over their phone cases. This one is from Elliot Olm, and he also designed these two as well, which I'm obsessed with. I really love this style. I feel like I always wear quite like neutral colors, so having a funky phone case is so fun. You can also customize your case, which is really nice, makes for a great gift. Like, these would make a great Christmas present, so make sure you order before the 8th of December for standard shipping, and before the 16th of December for express shipping to guarantee delivery, just in case because it's a case, phone case, get it? Okay, never mind. You also have the Impact and Ultra Impact phone cases, and these offer military grade protection, which if you're as clumsy as I am, you kind of need. So to give you an example, let's pop my phone into this case, and we're gonna do the drop test. Everyone pray. Okay, yeah, look, completely fine. It's all good. Case to fire never doubted you for a second. And they come in this gorgeous packaging. And since tis the season for giving, I'm giving you a discount code. You can go to casetofy.com slash Jack Edwards and get 15% off a case to fire order. That is my gift to you. I'm going back to this case because it's my favorite one and back to the celebrities with Dakota Johnson. I love her. And not only because she like brought down Ellen without even trying, she also normalized the idea that it's just a okay to lie sometimes. Just lie for the sake of lying, and I respect that so thoroughly. First impression upon seeing both A Little Life and Lolita is I'm nervous. <laughs> this is gonna be unhinged, oh lord. We also have some more Patti Smith, and the biggest flex of all time. She goes, oh I said to Patti, I love your poetry so much, I love your work. Come on now. We're in Patty's DMs. She's telling Patty face to face. We are not the same. Then there's these other books which were seen on her bookshelf in the iconic Architectural Digest interview. A real theme here is just that she is iconic without even really trying. I feel like she just causes World War III with everything that she does. Chooses chaos every single day and then just goes home and puts her feet up. Surrounded by limes <laughs> in her green kitchen. Every day this woman chooses violence and remains unbothered and I respect it. We have Feel Free by Zadie Smith, The Vagina Monologues by Eve Ensler, and Into Thin Air by John Krakner. Honestly, these are as chaotic as I hoped and dreamed they would be. Thank you, Dakota Johnson. We appreciate it. Next, we have Jessica Chastain. I want her to play Celia St. James in Evelyn Hugo so much. I am begging on my hands and knees Please cast this woman in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, please. There is nothing I want more, nothing, not a single thing. Okay, I think I've actually got a full house for the first time in this video. I've read all three of these books. Interestingly, Furious Love is the story of Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, and this is definitely a huge inspiration behind Evelyn Hugo. Hmm, what are the chances? This story of their tumultuous love story is a must read if you're interested in like Hollywood drama and celebrity gossip and the tabloids. It's a little long, but it is a cool insight. Next we have the second mention of To Kill a Mockingbird. My favorite book has already been made into a movie and that's To Kill a Mockingbird. It's perfection as it is. Yeah, it is wonderful. Then we have Misery by by Stephen King, which is basically about a woman who captures her favorite author. She like kidnaps him and forces him to write novels, which I'm not saying I would do, but I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I loved that her name was Misery Chastain. Like, yes. So yeah, 
I was a Stephen King fan. <laughs> okay, sure. I love that she's so happy that the psycho character in this book has the same surname as her. <laughs> Good for you, Jessica. Next we have Zoe Kravitz. Catwoman, super nepo baby, we love her. Ah, oh, there we go. There's Just Kids by Patti Smith, which is basically a book of like, how many names can I drop? in 400 pages. Except that's kind of like just what her life was. She just knew everyone, so you have to give it to her. I think she's a great writer and living in New York too, the way she describes the city at that time is so romantic. It always inspires me and makes me so happy that I live here. Honestly, same. She recommended Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay by just saying, at Roxane Gay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then she has not one, but two J.D. Salinger recommendations, which some would say is a red flag, but for Zoe Kravitz, I'm colorblind. And then this final book, Women Who Run With The Wolves, I've never heard of. She says it's been really inspiring to her. Let's see what it's about. Within every woman, there is a wild and natural nature, a powerful force filled with good instincts, passionate creativity, and ageless knowing. This book shows how women's vitality can be restored through what she calls psychic archeological digs, into the ruins of the female unconscious. It uh, sounds interesting. Okay, Emma Mackey, we have a little life again. I think we need to form some sort of support group for all of us here because why are we all loving this book so much? She says, for a book to get lost in, I would recommend a little life, which is incredible. What exactly are you getting lost in? A depression hole? We also have the girls again. We have the power again. If you want female empowerment, there's the power by Naomi Alderman. It's amazing. And we have Sapiens, which she just says, really good. Concise, to the point. I like it. This is kind of funny actually because I've previously made a video on Maeve Wiley's book recommendations, which is the character <laughs> that Emma Mackey plays in Sex Education. And you know what? I think they both have great taste. Like actress, like character. We love to see it. Next we have Keira Knightley. Will these books give me pride or prejudice <laughs> towards her? Ah, there it is. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, of course. Wait, is that The Reader? She recommended The Reader? What on earth? She said it's beautiful. Uh, you know, this is a book about a woman who is like a pedophile. And not only that, she's also a Nazi, which is just really the worst blend of things, isn't it? Beautiful is maybe not the word that I would use, but to each their own. Into Chat Darkness. Into that darkness. That's a weird font. That's an interesting choice. That font nearly had me looking like a fool. Anyway, she said she devoured this book. Also seeing a swastika. These are strange recommendations. And then we have Revolutionary Road. She called this book and the reader, oh, two really depressing books, but really good. Not exactly a barrel of laughs. We could have done with that a bit earlier in the slideshow. <laughs> and actually that's kind of what I like about books too, when they're very sad and somber and messed up but also really well written. So maybe we're more similar than I thought. Still, that review of the reader is a little questionable. Next we have Lupita Nyong'o. You know what this is giving? Taste. This is giving T-A-S-T-E. -E. Americana, yes. The Great Gatsby, yes. The book I've read the most times. I love the decadent melancholy of it. My favorite sentence from the book is when Daisy says, what will we do with ourselves this afternoon, the day after that, and then the next 30 years? Now this is restlessness and privilege if I ever heard it. Okay, Lupita, giving us literary criticism. I'm gonna be out of a job. Damn, is there anything this woman can't do? Then we have Americana, stunning book. So, so, so stunning. I was struck with exactly how I related to the author's depiction of the contemporary African immigrant experience. She captures it, expresses it, analyzes it, and celebrates it. Okay, I trust these recommendations. Next we have Saga. It's Romeo and Juliet passion meets Star Wars epic and Game of Thrones provocativeness, but with sharp and witty dialogue and incredibly imaginative illustration. Have you ever heard someone sell a book so well? My favorite character, Lying Cat, a cat that instead of meowing, says lying every time someone lies in its presence. Now that's a superpower I would want. Okay, then we have The Sun Does Shine. It's a real downer to read about something as dark and unfortunate as wrongful, wrongful incarceration. But Mr. Hinton expresses himself with a heart incomprehensibly swollen with love and gives meaningful insight into his alienating experience, and he does so with a disarming sense of humor. Lupita, I want all of these. You need to answer to my bank account, Lupita Nyong'o, because sold, sold on all of the above. Next we have Emma Stone, Cruella de Vil. I wonder if people are like afraid to go on dog walks with her now <laughs> after seeing that movie. Anyway, this is giving unhinged and I love it. Two JD Salinger books and Joan Didion. 
Wow, okay. What did she say about Blue Knights? If you're a Joan Didion fan, firstly, who isn't? And have read The Year of Magical Thinking, then you need to read her new book because it's about Quintana dying. It's pretty awful, but it's so beautiful. I like that description, it's pretty awful, but it's beautiful. That's exactly what I'm looking for in a book, so thank you. And I love Joan Didion, but I haven't yet read Blue Knights, so I am gonna take that recommendation, thank you. I'm seeing Elizabeth Olsen, and I'm also seeing Circe by Madeline Miller. If she's a Madeline Miller stan, then I'm an Elizabeth Olsen stan. She says it's a favorite novel of hers, I agree. Sublime writing, beautiful Greek mythological retelling, recentering female characters who are often overlooked in Greek mythology, amazing. Then we have All the Light We Cannot See. Oh my God, I love it, it's amazing, she says. I, I feel like I'm really going against the grain. Like everyone seems to love this book and I, didn't. I've read two of Anthony Doe's books at this point and I didn't like either of them. Something about his writing style just doesn't click with me personally and that's okay because Elizabeth Olsen recommended it and I, I trust her more than I trust myself to be honest with you. I also love Malcolm Gladwell. Here we have Talking to Strangers. She says it's a favorite nonfiction book of hers. I totally get that. He has a really great way of writing where he backs everything up with science and so his observations are very believable. They are backed up so I like Mal Malcolm Gladwell. I think that's a rare approach in the self-help genre, so I respect it. Kate Blanchett. Everything I've ever seen from this woman has been so beyond iconic that I'm very intrigued by the book she recommends. Firstly, I'm seeing The Master and Margarita, which is a crazy book to recommend. That says to me, intellectual. That says to me, I'm smarter than you and I want you to know it. That's big dick energy to say that's one of your favorite books. Fair play, fair play. She says, I know it's about censorship, the death of Christ, and it's about the brightest mind and imagination and love, but it's also very sexy. Sure, okay. Next we have a manual for cleaning women. Wait, like a manual for women who clean or a manual for how to clean women. It could be either. A book that broke her heart. She is set to star in the film adaptation. There you go, how cool. Okay, when someone says that a book broke their heart, I immediately want to read it. And maybe that says a lot about me, but I'm gonna go to the bookstore and buy that. Oh, then we have Aftermath by Rachel Cusk. This is first and foremost a Rachel Cusk fan account. She's so cool. I think Kate Blanchett is cool too. Speaking of cool, now for Michaela Cole, who is Cool. She is the writer of I May Destroy You, which did in fact destroy me. It did what it said on the tin. And I think if you're capable of writing something so brilliant, then you probably have a really good taste in books. So I'm going in with a very open mind here. You know, I don't want to be rude, <laughs> but I just somehow in my head thought these book recs were going to be cooler. I thought Michaela Cole would have more interesting books to recommend. We have Homodeus. Reading Homodeus helped me understand that nobody really knows what's going on. The subtle art of not giving a fuck and her review is, it helped me give less of a fuck. The three body problem, if I can read this book and get it while also being completely gripped, anyone can. And then, okay, now we're getting something juicy. Kurt Vonnegut. She says, I love it so much that I included an homage to Kurt Vonnegut in I May Destroy You in episode two when Arabella is at a clinic and meets a woman who is covered in blood, having been assaulted. The woman said, everything is beautiful and nothing hurts, which is written on Kurt Vonnegut's grave. That is a fun fact. Not so fun for him because he's dead, but fun for us, fun for you and me. We love an Easter egg. Okay, Taylor Swift. And finally, we have Sophie, I don't do cocaine, Turner. And I've read four out of five of these books. A John Ronson fan, I like it. Of the psychopath test, she says, I think John Ronson is wonderful and he has such incredible stories to tell. He's lived such an interesting life. I agree, and he really takes you on the journey with him. He like, does this sort of like pop psychology, but he goes in, willing to learn. Like he, he doesn't go in with the answers to start with. He goes in and interviews people, learns from people, and then comes to conclusions and takes you with him. And I love that style of writing. Then we have Writers and Lovers. This book that I'm reading right now called Writers and Lovers is so good, she says. Yeah, I think this book is wonderful. A great gift for someone who's like navigating their 20s or 30s. We have The Tattooist of Auschwitz. It's a really amazing story based on a true story and it's just fascinating and harrowing and beautiful and I recommend it to anyone. And then Nothing to See Here. I love this cover. Lillian and Madison were unlikely roommates and yet inseparable friends at their elite boarding school. But then Lillian Lillian had to leave the school unexpectedly in the wake of a scandal and they've barely spoken since, until now, when Lillian gets a letter from Madison pleading for her help. Okay, you've got me, I'm intrigued. Madison's twin stepkids are moving in with her family and she wants Lillian to be their caretaker. However, there's a catch. The twins spontaneously combust 
when they get agitated, flames igniting from their skin in a startling but beautiful way. That is absurd. I kind of love it. Sophie Turner has great taste. She's married a Jonas brother. She's winning. She she won. Okay, so I literally had just finished speaking about Sophie Turner and my camera battery died, which I think is my camera's way of saying you've said enough at this point. It's it's time to wrap it up. Let's call it a day. So it is now the next day, and so I've had time to you know, let these recommendations sit for a little bit. And now these are the ones that I think um, I'm definitely taking these recommendations. So we have Nothing to See Here, which was recommended by Sophie Turner, Breakfast of Champions, which was recommended by Michaela Cole, A Manual for Cleaning Women, which was recommended by Kate Blanchett, Blue Nights, which was recommended by Emma Stone, Dawn, which was recommended by Lupita Nyong'o, Feel Free, recommended by Dakota Johnson, and M Train, recommended by Phoebe Dynever. I think I'm going for a Manual for Cleaning Women, Breakfast of Champions, and M Train. So I can be just like these people. Definitely the most recommended were Patti Smith, Everyone Loves Bill Patti, A Little Life, and The Girls, because we all need professional help. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you do subscribe if you want to see part two and part three. I also maybe, possibly, potentially have some very exciting news coming on this channel in the next like week or so um, and my second channel too so make sure you are subscribed for that if you like this video you can give it a like and thank you so so much to case for sponsoring like i said the link is down below until next time all the best stay in touch have a wonderful day and i'll catch you very soon Bye bye